J'ai juste la caméra, je suis comme ça et je fais Ah, oh, tiens, Super Green Lab Hey, welcome to Super Green Lab So, in today's episode, we're gonna see how to turn this cabinet we found in the trash into a connected grow box. What? You're gonna miss for 20? No, we're not. Oh, look! Is that is that the grub box? All right, let's turn this piece of trash into a connected grub box. Right, so let's make some plans. So the first step is to measure the box. We got 80 by 54 centimeters in Imperia units written right here. For this build, we want to make a continuous supply, but the difference with the last time is we want both spaces to be able to do the whole cycle. For this build, we hesitated. At first, we thought maybe we could do it vertically, and we would put three LED panels on both sides. It actually works well, we have a guy in the community that did it and it worked awesome. The thing is, if we only have 27 centimeters wide, it's a bit short. Especially since it's 35 centimeters deep, so we don't even have a square as a surface. So, for this build, we're gonna split the box in the middle, put three LED panels on each level, then we'll see how to train the plant. So obviously the problem we're gonna have is the lack of vertical space. So we will only have 40 centimeters high for the plant and the pot. We have to take the pot into account that usually takes at least 15 or 20 centimeters, but we're gonna try to make it shorter. It's going to require a special training for the plants. We hesitated again with two possibilities. Either we grow the plant like a normal main lining with a horizontal canopy going on each side. But in this case, we're going to try something a bit different that is not harder, it's actually a bit easier because you don't have the limits for the first node, is to grow the plant on the side so it takes the whole horizontal space by bending it across the whole space. Now, the first step is to paint it white because Right now, it's a bit dirty and it's all brown and it's not the best condition for a plant. So we're gonna use other less paint because you don't want to use something like spray paint because it stinks even weeks after you've painted. So acrylic white paint works perfectly well and will not put any kind of smell in your good way. Let's paint it. So now we have our cabinet painted white. Next step is to add the middle shelf to it. So as we said, we want to make two horizontal spaces on top of each other, and we want both spaces to be equal. So we're gonna put the middle shelf at the exact middle of the box. In order to do that, we're gonna make wood blockers with this. One thing, we should have done that before painting in white, because you can't glue that over white paint or you'll be holding everything by the paint, which is not very solid. Let's start by cutting these by the same width as the middle shelf. All right, so now that we have these, we're gonna be able to glue them inside the box. We're gonna prefer to glue it because this is quite bad quality wood, so if we try to screw in it, there is a big chance that we're actually just going to remove the wood from the furniture. So we're gonna have to glue them, uh, but as I just said, we should have glued that first and then paint after that. We're just going to mark their position and then remove the paint in that position so we are able to glue them on the wood and not on the paint. Uh, 
And now the only gun I know how to use. Alright, so now we are ready to install the ventilation unit and the carbon filter. You could either do like we did in the previous AK video with the cardboard ventilation unit, but in this build we're gonna use this tiny carbon filter prototype. This is free printed so you can download it, it's in the description. The point of it is it works with stacks. So each level has these honeycomb shapes so you can fit it with carbon pellets. And then the point is you can stack multiple of them on top of each other. One of the goal is that usually the plant smells much less during the vegetative phase. So you don't need to put as much carbon as during the end of bloom, for example, where the smell is the strongest, where in this case you would stack multiple of them on top of each other. So the first step is to put the blower in place. Take a pencil, mark the reference to know where it should be. We're gonna take this carbon filter to take the measure of this intake with the pencil and the piece of paper. Then this little piece of paper, once in place, will give us the perfect size to make the hole and have it installed the right way. All right, let's make a hole. Okay, so we have our blower in place and we have this part of the carbon filter in place too. So we're gonna fill just this level of carbon filter. It should be way enough for the vegetative state in case the plant still smells, it sometimes happens. All right, so now next step, we're gonna do it again for this level. And then we will move to the next stage, which is to do the intake hole, so the air can go inside the box. Right, so the blowers are in place with the carbon filters. So now we have to make some intake holes so the air can go inside the box. What's important when you do the intake hole, it should be on the opposite side of the blower. In this case, we'll make it down there. When doing the intake holes, the base logic is to have as much intake surface as you have outtake surface. So basically that means you need the intake to be at least as big as the blower's hole. Alright, so now the blowers are set up, the filters are set up, and we did the intake holes. Now the next phase is to set up the lights, and then we're gonna plug the controller to the rest to control everything. So now let's put some lights to simulate the sun inside the box, and a break. So the reason to add this controller to the box is going to allow us to easily split the box into independent boxes which means we're going to be able to have one in veg and the other in bloom at the same time. And it also brings some really cool stuff like remote monitoring of your temperature and humidity and VPD and also brings you temperature and humidity alerts to make sure you don't get any unfortunate issues and also brings some cool stuff like having your blower actually controlled by the temperature 
so you make sure the box is as quiet as possible. Just like with the blower, to attach the LED panels, you could do like we did in the previous a video, where we use some cardboard to attach the panels. But in this case, like with the blower, we're gonna use 3D printed designs, so just like the blower, you can get it in the description. So we're gonna put three on each level, two on the sides with a 35 degrees angle, and one in the middle that will be flat on the ceiling. Alright, so the LED panels are in place, so we're gonna put this behind the box, in the middle, so we are sure all the wires can reach the controller. Alright, so now the controller is in place, it's time to put the wires and to switch everything on. The first step is, we're gonna take those wires, those are the LED wires. They are quite long, so they should be way enough, but we just want to know where we are going to do the holes to get them through it. It's one and a half meters. It's Imperial unit here. All right, so we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna make a small hole at the top here, the middle, and another one right here in the middle of the lower level. But when you make these holes, just make sure to make them big enough to get the LED wires plugged. Take into account that at one point you will have three of the wires into the hole as you need to put the blower's wire into it. Alright, so now we got the cables in place. Uh, we're gonna tidy them a bit. We're gonna use the good old glue gun to glue the wires in the corners of the box. Alright, and now we have a last thing to get inside the box to the controller, which is the temperature and humidity sensor, which is really important because this is what's going to save us from any kind of issues. We get alerts for temperature and humidity and that will be able to control the blower. So this is really important. Alright, so now we're gonna have to plug everything into the controller. So we need to pay attention to the order of the LED panels because we'd like to be able to control them independently if we want to more light on the side or in the middle. So we're gonna mark each wire for each LED panels. And so on the controller we have six LED channels, which means we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, so for this I'm gonna use these small papers, but you could use anything just as long as you can differentiate them. And now the bottom row, which is four, five, six. Now we're ready to plug it in the controller. So it's quite simple, you have each LED channel that is marked with their respective number. Light one, light two, light three, and so on. So let's start with LED one here. So same for the motor ports, you have the labels for each port. The labels are a bit small, but we will make them bigger in the next version. And then at last, the sensors. So anyway, when you plug it in, don't worry about plugging inside the wrong hole. They're all stoner proof, so you can't mess it up and fry the controller. It's a nice mess of wires, so we're gonna fix this by doing a little bit of cable management, so we're not going to go too far with it either. We're just going to use a bunch of zip ties. So we're gonna attach each wires together for each boxes and then we will try to find a way to put them behind the box so it doesn't look too bad, right? Okay, look. 
It's not perfect, but at least this is the side that's going to be hidden against the wall, so it should be okay. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, we're gonna turn this thing on. Power cable, uh, we're gonna plug it in, and one important thing to do is to then attach it with some zip tie here. You don't want it to get loose at all, right? Right, so you'll notice something, everything is off. We need to use the app to set it up. So we made this app, it's on the App Store for iOS and Android. So at first it was just to control our connected grow boxes, like setting the schedules or the lights and ventilation power. Now it's a full-fledged diary app where you can take notes of your watering, your nutrient mixes. Also you can take notes of your training, like when you top or when you bend your plant, so you can come back to it later and see how you did in the previous plant. It's a great tool for people who tend to forget things. And you also have this awesome community tab that will show you how others do it. Feel free to ask uh, any question to the community, they'll be glad to answer you. By the way about the community, make sure to join our Discord server if you have questions. We'll be there and the community will be there too to answer any question. Feel free to join in. We're ready to set up our box, so I'm gonna start by adding a new plant. The first plant we're gonna grow in there is already started and is a blueberry OG from Dutch Patient. Alright, so I'm gonna create this plant in the app. This is going to create the diary as well as set up the controller. I'm gonna create my lab. We're gonna call it Trash Top, alright? Because this is the top level. I'm gonna add my new controller. You can choose this, brand new. Alright, so on iOS, it's going to ask you for geolocation. So unfortunately, you have to accept it just once. Um, I promise we don't do geolocation, we don't store your location, or whatever. We're not interested in your private life, but you need to honor it once for the setup to complete. What the app just did is connect automatically to the controller's Wi-Fi, and now it's loading all the parameters of our controller. So now we're done. We're gonna give our controller a name, and it's going to be Trash Controller. Now I'm going to test the LEDs, so we're going to see something light on. So let's test with the first LED, which should be either this one or this one, I don't remember. Oh okay, yeah, it's this one. But you can't see it because there's too much light. Let me do it again. Should work. Yeah, no, it's still too much light, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but this one just light up, okay? Then I'm going to do it with the middle one, third one here, this one, the middle, and the last one here. So everything is working, it's awesome. Let's move on. I'm gonna press the pair controller button. This is security measure because you can control your boxes from anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. But you need to pair your mobile phone with your controller so anyone else can't take control of your box. Now I'm gonna enter my Wi-Fi configuration because we want remote control, we want remote monitoring, we want temperature and humidity alerts, we want all this. Okay, so now we are at the controller box slot configuration screen. You can actually have up to three boxes, but we only have two today, so we're going to take the first one. We're going to choose the three first LED, because the top is connected to the LED channels one, two, and three. So one, two, three. So we can see that all three are on now, so it's good. And maybe you can hear it. The ventilation just switched on. We're gonna dim the light down a bit because right now it's just way too much. Everything is at 100%, but trust me, with just three of those LED panels, you could cover much more surface than this just tiny box. If we had found furniture with three levels, we would probably have done three levels with two LED each. So here, we could go to uh, maybe 35%. Still quite a lot of light, but okay, so now we're gonna see how the plant reacts and we'll see if, if it needs more or less light, but here it should be right. We are in the vegetative schedules from 3 a.m. to 9 p.m., so 18 hours. We're gonna enable the notifications. Alright, so now we got our 
temperature and humidity alert setup, which means if something goes wrong, if for some reason you have too much humidity, the application will just tell you with a small modification. So now it's at 28 degrees, so that's 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 66% humidity. Here we are in the basement and so we can do better than that. I'm gonna put my plant in public so you can follow it. It's going to be called Blueberry OG, so you can find it with the search feature in the community lab. You, you found the link in the description, by the way. So first install the app, then click the link. All right, so now it looks like we are ready to put the plant in there. But before putting the plant, we're gonna do one last installation in this thing, which is we're gonna put a remote camera because one of the other cool features of the app is that we can set up a small camera and get a live view remotely and also we'll get some daily and weekly time lapses of everything that happens to our plant and this is one of the best ways to detect any issues before they arise. So we made these small cameras with just a Raspberry Pi Zero and a small Raspberry Pi camera with infrared vision. So it can take pictures during the night and they are actually quite important because the plant moves the most during the night when the light is off. To make it easier to adapt to any furniture, we designed this small camera holder that you can, of course, 3D print. It's free in the description. You'll find the link to the STL. And we also made a very cool complete guide from setting up the Raspberry Pi to installing it inside the box, so you find this thing in the description too. The best position to install it is slightly at the top of the box and in the corner, so you are sure you have a whole view of the whole space. By the way, those are wide-angle camera. Even if you are quite close to the plant, it's going to have a really wide view. So I'm gonna put it here, just behind the door. And now we're gonna install the second camera right here in the corner. All right, so both our cameras are in place now. So we're gonna do something quite important because you're gonna see what happens when I close the doors. I'm gonna switch it on now. Here's the problem. It's quite clear. There's a bit of light going out. You should not expose a blooming plant to light during its night. It's not so critical. I mean, if you had just this as a gap, it should do. I mean, don't expose it to direct light, of course, but this should be acceptable for the plant. It doesn't look that good, so maybe we want to seal the gap to avoid any light leaks, at least to make it a bit more stealthy. So for the light proofing of the box, there is no perfect solution, but usually, you know, any kind of sealing gasket should do, so I like this one that has some hair because it's quite easy to work with. The main problem being that when you install the ceiling gasket, be really careful that the ceiling gasket does not prevent the good functioning of the doors. So it shouldn't block it from closing or anything. For the middle lightly, use whatever you have at your disposition. We're gonna use this flat plastic piece. We're gonna put this behind this door here. So the point is, we're gonna have to close this door first and then this one. First step is to cut it at the right side. All right, so we have it at the right side. So now we're gonna glue it in place. Now the middle is uh, satisfying. So we're gonna switch the side here. I'm gonna open one door, take a pencil, I'm going to trace the frame of the door inside the furniture. Now the game is going to be able to put this along the line, making sure the line goes along the hair on the ceiling gasket. Not necessarily the little sticky part, but more the hair. Right, it works quite well. There is a tiny bit of light going out still, but it's really acceptable. So let's go on with this and finish the whole frame. Alright, so we got our light proofing ready for the frame. So there is one last part that we want to make light proof that we can't actually see here. It's the little gap you have here that will make some light leaks between 
one space and the other. You don't want the vague light to leak to the bloom space because the most important thing with the light leaks is that the blooming plants shouldn't be interrupted during their night. And we're gonna light proof here the little gap between the two spaces for this. We're gonna use this one. I hope it's the right thickness for the job but just by looking at it, it looks right. So let's try it. So now the light proofing is good. So, well, that means we are now ready to put a plant inside the box. And that's awesome. All right, so this is our tiny temporary laboratory because we are moving in a new house soon, but this is for the next video. Yeah, just let me talk to you about this place. So this is our army of airkits. So the whole point is, we didn't really succeed at doing follow-up videos for plants on the YouTube channel in the past. The thing is, turned out it's quite difficult on the logistic level and all. So now we're gonna do it for real. So we're gonna have all these airkits to do all kinds of experiments with light spectrum, CO2, and white sensors, and many more experiments. So what we prepared for the next episodes is we have this mother plant in the cardboard box here. It's a chemical bride from greenhouse seeds. So the whole plan is that it has a very, very good genetics. So we're gonna use it to make clones, which will allow us to make much more real experiments and we'll be sure of the results. All right, so let's move on and get our plant in the nursery. So what we have here is a blueberry OG from Dutch Patient. We started it a bit like a bonsai, like we bend the trunk like crazy. It's even going downward. So you can see the trunk is going like this and all. So it's going to be a fun grow. As you can see, it's a bit yellow. So that's because again, we waited a bit too long because of the shooting. It's going to be okay, she's going to recover. All right, so we're gonna put it into biota. So let's go upstairs and let's do the mix and show you how to use it. Oh, hey Diego. Hey Stan. What's up bro? We got this to report. I see you got all the hardware set up, so it's awesome. So let's go. Here. Thank you. All right, so now the point is we're gonna repot the plant with biotaps. Biotap is great because then you only need to water with tap water. But there's a bit of setup, so Diego is going to show us how to do it. All right, so as Stan said, there's a bit of preparation to do. And the most important part is knowing the volume of soil we'll be using. So for reference, this is a three gallon pot. So as you remember, we have two different spaces that are about 40 centimeters each. So we're going to roll down the pot a bit so that it's two gallons. And voila, a two gallon pot. We prepared here two gallons of soil and we're going to be preparing it with uh, the Biotabs starter kit we received. So thanks Luce again for the Biotabs. This is not a sponsored video, but we really liked their products and they're cool people. This is what's in the box. The Biotabs, some powders to prepare the soil, some beneficial bacteria, some beneficial mycorrhizae spores, and some liquid to feed everything. All right, so let's get to preparing the soil. So for a two gallon pot, we're going to need a bit of measuring. 50 grams of Star Trek. Right. And 50 grams of silicium flesh. Take a pinch out. Perfect. The first step is going to be mixing this into the soil. Let's go. All right. Once it's thoroughly mixed, we're going to put it in our pot. Have an assistant with me. <laughs> right. 
Now we're gonna dig a hole for the plant in the middle. Now we're going to put some mycorrhizae spores to help with the roots for the transplants. So it's just to spray a little bit in the hole. We're going to untie the LST vines, flip it upside down, holding the branches, and now you squeeze on the sides to free the plant. Nice roots. And we're going to spray a little bit more. This will help with uh, the transplant shock and to help the roots grow. Now we're going to tamp a bit on the sides and we're going to fill it in. All right. The next step is to put the bio tabs in. These are slow release fertilizers that interact with the powders we just put in. So for two gallons, we're going to put two, about 10 centimeters deep. We'll take one and push it in, and the other one and push it in. So the final step now is to activate everything with some water and some beneficial bacteria. Thank you. So I prepared three liters of water and it says here, two grams per liter. So quick math, three liters of water, two grams per liter, that's six grams of Bactrex to activate all the powders we put in the soil and the bio tabs. Come on, Whoa, that's perfect. This goes in. And we're going to add five milliliters of Orgatrex per liter of water. So five milliliter of this per liter of water, you press it and it fills up, so that's 10. And five more. All right, now we give it a good shake. And we're ready to water. This is prime nutrients for all the bacteria, all the fungi, all the soil life. There's a bit of runoff because the soil was super dry when we put it in. So it's going to be absorbed by capillarity. So we're gonna let it rest for a bit and then we're going to put it in the trash box. We're now a few weeks later, the plant is blooming nicely. This kind of training does always some great results. It's actually quite easy. If you want details about it, you can find it on the diary of the plant that we kept updated. You'll find the link in the description of this video. So now what this plant just needs is a bit of rest and that we thank our five Patreons Thank you guys, you're awesome, and this plan thanks you a lot. For the next two weeks, every Patreon will receive a batch of stickers, of free stickers. It's free, wow. Well, not really because you have to become a Patreon, but it still works. So you get free stickers for the next two weeks. And because we are at it, we're gonna pick one random subscriber and send him more stickers. So if your name appears here or somewhere here on the screen, you're gonna get some stickers, so send us a DM and we'll send you a bunch of stickers. Let's put her inside her box. Make sure to follow the diary and send us a message if you see anything strange on the daily time-lapse. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and see you for the next episode.